So, welcome back to the evaluation and discussion of part two of the session two, green manure and cover crops. So, um, I want to start with a quote. Um, the soil is the great connector of our lives, the source and destination of all. This is a quote by Wendell Berry. He's poet, farmer, and environmental activist. And this refers also to the last session, German session uh, of where also uh, Hubert, uh, Franz Brunner and Hubert Stark were involved. And I like this talk about the, that it is seen as a, peace, as a peace movement, the soils, and that there are not enemies, that we all build like healthy soils in order to also grow healthy crops. And I like this, um, this approach also um, that they have like a hummus stammtisch, like a regular ta table on hummus. I like this idea as well. Maybe we can get back to this later. It was like the approach where they get on the field directly and discuss the problems and often they are better solved if uh, you're working directly on the field on the, prob uh, on the problems. So um, having said that, I want to say we again, we first have uh, Stefan, he will come up and do the evaluation round. And afterwards, we're going to have some talk with the facilitators. And you can ask as well. You know the procedure, I guess, so already. So you can ask questions anytime and just put it on the chat on the right side. So I first want to welcome Stefan on the stage. Please come up. Thank you, Martin for the introduction so like this morning we would like to have a short summary from the discussion about the best for soil project this afternoon the questions were about the benefit of the project these are not easy questions but we would like to know what we must improve that the videos the fact sheets and also the um, the database are really used from you as farmer and advisor so we start like this morning with Ustria. Uh, Markus, what is the conclusion from the discussion about the evaluation part? Hello, guys. Hello, Markus. So Hello. We had, we had a, a, yeah, a very good afternoon. Uh, and um, yeah, regarding the evaluation, uh, I also have s some kind of a quote uh, because uh, it is about multiplying knowledge. And uh, if you want to multiply knowledge, you have uh, to pose the questions why and the questions how. So I think that sums it up very good. So you have to ask questions and you have to go out uh, in the nature to get more knowledge. So um, yeah, regarding multiplying uh, the knowledge, I think uh, we are on a good way. Uh, we have to to uh, share the practitioners network. We have to use uh, magazines, for example, to multiply our knowledge, the newsletters, the social media in order to spread it. Uh, for example, the um, uh, Agra newsletter already was uh, recognized uh, in the in the audience. Uh, we have also worked uh, to work together with the universities, for example, who have a lot of knowledge about it. But uh, most importantly, uh, we have to get the knowledge out to the farmers. Those are the, the most important remarks. And uh, from a, a general side or from a technical perspective, uh, the workshop went very fine. Uh, as Martin uh, already told, uh, it was a pleasure to have Franz and Hubert in the discussion. And uh, I think, yeah, it's it's very important to get the knowledge of those people uh, out there. Okay, thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we go further to Bulgarian. Um, Stoika, are you there? I hope you are. So I think he's not. Yes, Stoika, hello to hello. Bulgarian. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> okay, hello. what's the conclusion from the evaluation part from this afternoon, please? Uh, so we had also a very, very nice discussion this afternoon with less people compared to the morning session. Uh, it's almost 6 p.m. here. Uh, but 
discussing the it was mainly the question how to share the knowledge how to share the information about the platform the best for so platform and uh, all, all other um, uh, database or fact sheets etc to, to to get to to more people because in here in bulgaria we have a, a small group of maybe 100 people interested of the thematic and some very enthusiastic enthusiastic farmers like we see these two uh, farmers from from austria so, but the network is still very small so we need to 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 get uh, or to spread the information to to much more people than we have in the moment so it was maybe uh, it was the main discussion in the in the in the evaluation part and we the first decision was that we will try to 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 put links in the different facebook groups or uh, internet site with this information to share the events or uh, new new initiatives started the second uh, point it was uh, mentioned that the best uh, tool for um, engage people is the farm visit or field visit or dem demo field visits uh, of course now it's difficult because of the corona crisis but it will be good to start or when it's possible to organize some field visit or some demo demo fields whenever it is maybe in this part of europe it will be easier to organize and to travel up to 1000 kilometers it's not a problem so for the pharmacists will be good to have this this practice part of the not only to speak on the via, via, via internet but also to have a real exchange in the farm this is in, in brief thank you thank very you much, very interesting and it's very useful for us for the project to, to know what we have to do in, after. So next is Jan from the Czech Republic um, and also from Slovakia, from the Slovakian farmer and advisors. Yeah. Hello Jan. Um, can you give us some, some sentence? Sure, thanks Stefan for the floor. Uh, I think that this afternoon uh, we had a very lively discussion regarding the evaluation part. Uh, some people were mentioning the importance of the of showing the real practice to the farmers so that they can see it and hear it and were very supportive uh, when hearing about uh, uh, us organizing the workshops with the with the farmers and uh, advisors uh regarding that people were also recommending to to uh, collaborate more with the with the uh, accredited advisors who might have a big impact in the spreading in spreading of of the outcomes of the of the project uh, we got offer from the representatives of the Mendel University in Brno uh, to publish the results of the project through their channels. Uh, they are organizing seminars and lectures these days online where they could spread our uh, results. And interesting uh, outcome was uh, from actually uh, more more people together who agreed that we should also uh, target the broader public since in Czech Republic the issue is that most of the farmers uh, they work on the rented rented land and sometimes they are very busy or might not be interested in these topics but educating more the broader public in these topics might create the the awareness and let's say maybe a pressure on the farmers to start uh, acquiring the these methods the best for soil is is recommending so targeting a broader public with the with the outcomes of the best for soil project was a very interesting point for me in this session thank you jan thanks as well okay and um all the, the answers or or what you said before is written down so it's not uh, it's not uh, lost so we we have um, we've written down and now we, we can analyze it after after this session so next is judith from hungary i saw also an interesting discussion in this se session hello. hello judith hello thank you for the floor again 
and uh, we have uh, an interesting uh, uh, I don't say that discussion, but uh, we get, um, I would say, a lot of advices uh, how to uh, multiply uh, this knowledge that we put together in Best for Soil project. And um, um, what uh, um, farmers uh, said that uh, they like field, field days very much. So if we can, it would be nice to organize field days. The composting was a uh, topic to really see the technology of composting um, was really interesting um, in, our, uh, in our group. And uh, if uh, it's in real life is not possible, then uh, a video uh, meeting or, uh, or, or showing videos like uh, we did with the presentation would uh, also be a great help. But um, not only for composting, but the other topics um, that we can uh, do that. The other important um, advice was that we have to uh, be um, aware of uh, the older generation they don't uh, use that much online media so we have to uh, focus on uh, on um, uh, sending articles in the um, magazines um, that uh, um, with the topic of agriculture um, to give information on a way and in the meantime the younger generation are not really um, keen on the the paper media so we have to be present on the online um, on, on in online media as, as well uh, we had uh, an idea of uh, some kind of advertising campaign uh, with the highlights uh, of the benefits of the regeneration technologies to, to focusing on really advantages but when we get into details uh, we have to say uh, all the, uh, the advantages and the challenges as well um, to be fair with the communication um, and uh, maybe it would be a great help to find uh, uh, some uh, farmers associations uh, um, who are interested in this topic to, um, to cooperate uh, with them. And uh, also it would be nice to, um, to have um, these uh, ideas incorporated into in the materials of university uh, courses and other kind of uh, training material. So, well, that was, uh, I think, the advice that we get from the Hungarian participants. So, thank you a lot of work for us. It, it's, it's nice, thank you, uh, Judith. Yes. Now to Serbia, to Prankita. Prankita, yeah, she's here. Hello to Serbia. Hi. So we also had discussion and got a lot of, of ideas from, from our audience. And what was stressed as the first point is that our advertising of our material must be oriented to, uh, uh, a, to a certain generations. For example, younger generations like Facebook and other social, uh, social media, and it is easy way, to disturb information, but for older ones, uh, they are not, as you did say, they are not so familiar with this new technology. They rather read papers in in agricultural journals. And also, what was stressed in our uh, sec uh, section was that we need to uh, to get somehow on TV, because TV is the most uh, mostly used. Uh, 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 advertising tool in Serbia, let's say, and many farmers watch TV and there are a lot of agri uh, agricultural, let's say, series or something like that where they, they promote such activities. The other things are, as uh, Judith and the others say, demonstration places. So we need to to make it visible for them. They don't like to to read. They want to see it. They want to see that it works. So that we need some demonstration uh, demonstration sites, and also it was stressed that this uh, that we need cooperation with the universities to include a, a part of this into their courses because our students are mostly from family farms. So if they bring 
home that knowledge, then their their parents will also be aware of it. And what else? Uh, Mm, uh, they also said that winter classes will be uh, used, but organize uh, will be very useful at local level. So not as big events, but sm rather small uh, e events with specific topic, like we planned with our workshop for best for soil. So that is uh, more or less uh, all that we uh, we hear uh, in the Serbian stage. Let's say. Thank you, Pranitska. And um, I think also the, the ideas uh, are very well to organize um, um, on the field the events and to see, to smell, to feel. That's really the, the way to uh, we have also to go. So tomorrow morning we will have the last session and we would like to know what you learned from this workshop and also from the best for soil project so these are the two questions for tomorrow for the last session thank you to all for for your ideas and i give back the floor to you martin martin It. He did it. Epic fail. Yes, actually, I, yeah, the button. I didn't push it because um, I switched it off. But now you can hear me. So actually, I want to say uh, thank you, Stefan, for this wrap up. And this is wrap up part two, actually, where we go into discussion and we have question rounds. So please, I see um, some people left us already, but I really uh, encourage you who are still here or here again to put the questions which you have uh, just in the chat. Uh, maybe there will be popping up some questions or opinions, some comments um, when we talk to the facilitators, what we're going to do right now. So the first facilitator I want to talk to is Markus. He's from People Austria. You might know him already who joined the sessions before. So. Please, Markus, come up the stage and give us the wrap up of the Austrian session on um, the Austrian session number two. The session number two. Thank you, Martin. The <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Session number two. Yeah. Um, we had uh, three presentations which uh, yeah, were very lively discussed. So, uh, for example, I'll get right into it. Um, we wrote down. Uh, several questions, for example, for John Boy. It would be nice, John Boy, uh, if you could answer the the questions in person. Uh, for example, there was uh, one regarding the oat roots. So, are there studies on the previous crop value of oat roots? Mm -hmm. um, then the second one was. Um, how successful is the, the termination of the, the intercrop by grazing? Ah, John is already here. Yeah, maybe you could uh, directly answer the question I asked first. Yeah. Yes, hello. Yeah. Uh, hi, Marcus. Could you please just repeat the first question regarding yeah. the old truth? Because I was uh, just uh, connecting. Yeah, it, it was regarding um, the value of old roots uh, in the crop rotation. So uh, are there any studies? Of on the previous crop value of old roots, do you know something about it? Uh, no, so there were at least in Hungary. I, I have not met uh, such such studies, so so not yet. But uh, as for the as for the our American friends say that they always value the C four plants more, like like uh, corn or, or sorghum Sudan grass or or uh, or these kind of plants because they would say that they put in more. Uh, exudates and more carbon in the soil than the C3 plants like the oats or the triticale or these kind of things. But uh, what we could see, so uh, what we could see for the for the biomass of the and the root mass of the oats, uh, they were they were pretty convincing. But there were no uh, quantitative or qualitative studies uh, made for this thing. So I, if if there would be any, I will I will definitely uh, look it up. But uh, but not yet. Uh, I'm not aware of anything uh, of that like that for in this moment. Thank you. Uh, and uh, one that uh, fits uh, also in this topic. Uh, do you know if there are different root exudates taken into account in the mixtures you use? So 
are there mixtures created uh, specifically for their root exudates? Mm, um, not yet. So when we started in 2015, we were we were very far from understanding how the how the root exudates work. Um, and I would say that we are we are still just learning it. We can we can see that, of course, uh, perennial grass like uh, perennial uh, rye grass or something that is is more effective with with putting more carbon and more sugars in the soil. Uh, but that's a good point, and thank you very much for for bringing it up. But but we have not uh, studied this uh, in depth enough to to be able to create uh, uh, mixtures based on on the. On the on on the root exudates, so that's that's also a very interesting topic. We will have a we will have an uh, online webinar with with James Professor James White, uh, the creator of or the discoverer of the of the rhizophagy cycle. So in, in December, so we are keen to learn more about how the how this how this root exudates and this rhizophagy uh, cycle works. But that's that's a good point. But but now at the moment we are only. We're only we are, when we are creating the mixture, we, we strive for maximum diversity. So be, to be able to have at least uh, one cereal or one, let's say one uh, one cereal or, or one uh, old, uh, summer grass into it. In the mix, we are strive to have uh, uh, the legumes as well and some uh, roots with the, with, the, with, the, with the tap roots. So like a radish or a mustard. And of course, I think the biggest uh, I would say that the biggest constraint for creating a good mix is the price. So what the farmer is ready to pay for and how much they are ready to pay for it. So it's uh, we were experimenting with with uh, with a 32 way mix based on the Jena experiment. But like in Hungary, a 32 way mix with with all the legumes and cereals and grasses and everything else. Uh, that's that would cost like more than 100 euro per uh, per hectare, and that's that's just for the for the seed itself. So you have not seeded it, you have not terminated it. So it's uh, we we will definitely keep on and keep on discovering more species and how each species can be used. But there are also at the same time there are some constraints that we have to uh, keep in front of us in order to to be able to uh, the farmers uh, have to be able to uh, purchase uh, the mixes and and uh, it would be have to have a, a reasonable cost for it. Okay, thank you, Somber. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, and Markus. Now I'm asking you for the wrap up, the, maybe the conclusion of the last session, a short one. Yeah, a, sh a short conclusion. Uh, yeah, it was yes. very lively, and uh, the people are really mm -hmm. on the experiences of the of the practitioners. So, uh, a wrap up could be also a statement from uh, Franz and 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 Hubert, which said, mm -hmm. uh, "Yeah, you have to experience nature. You have to go out there to know how your uh, soil behaves, and to see what he needs." So I think they are very keen on that because uh, and because of that they also um, yeah process and 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 kind of live the regenerative mm -hmm. agriculture which is so important for the soil and and for this uh, best for soil project in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, was there any question to? There were a lot of questions, but I don't know so how, was, um, how the time constraint is. I, I we would have like for one question, we would have time. Yeah. If uh, there is uh, any really important question that came up, where yeah. I think this question uh, would be important for the panel and as well for the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, there was the question for uh, the under seats they used. So. They also use under seeds, for example, in potatoes. So not only uh, in, for example, cereals or uh, 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 mixed with cover crops. So, uh, but also uh, with vegetables. So that was uh, a very interesting question. Maybe uh, Hubert or Franz could answer that later on. Yes, yes, that we can. But then we go were, on. Maybe but there were many here, more. Then... Yeah, yeah <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> yeah, I would say like we go on and and. If there is time, we will definitely come back to it. Yes, please. Uh, so I would say I pass the mic first to because we're heading um, up. We're rushing up regarding time. So Stoiko from Yuselena from Bulgaria, please come up the stage. The floor is yours. Yeah. And you can start with the wrap up. Hi. Uh, we have also a very interesting discussion uh, and a lot of questions. 
some of them are really technical questions, but we have uh, we have noted on the um, uh, the question. Padlet. Yeah, on the Padlet, mm -hmm. uh, for example, mm -hmm. for Zomber, we have two questions. One of the questions he may be answered already. But the question was, uh, why do they use mixtures only with few crops and not uh, mixtures with uh, many, many crops as, as uh, other companies? Uh, the price mm -hmm. maybe is one of the, the first reason for that. Uh, and the second question is, when we terminate rye with the glyphosate, do we stop the aleopathic properties of the rye? Mm -hmm. So for the, for the first question, uh, it's, it's coming from, I think, it's a step-by-step it's a -step process, at least in the Hungarian mines. So, so most Hungarian farmers started cover cropping with two species, so like an oilseed radish and a mustard mix. And I think uh, compared to the, those mixes, uh, or, uh, or mixes are also... Uh, uh, another step so when you go for a four six or for an eight way mix and of course i know that for for them to dsv zaten and they they have like uh i don't know 20 or more 20, 20 plus species uh but it's also what we can see so so we had a farmer who tried out a 32 way mix this year and only like like seven or eight eight uh, species came up in his mix he was a bit disappointed but it also meant that he could see that which are the are the components that would uh, that would work the best uh, for their uh, uh, would, would work best for their uh, for their soil for for that that time of the year when when they are seeding it. Uh, but well, what we can see that works best for for an advanced farmer is like when he can go to an eight to to 12, uh, 12 component mix. That's that's also a big uh, big step. So I would say that once you are you are done with your learning curve and you have found the mixes that were the best for your soil uh, or, or the species, you can go up and you can you can have more. We can see we have farmers who are very successful with a four or with a five component mix as well. So I know the I know the results that the more mix you have, the more. Uh, uh, services you get that's that's also true but that's that's talker you said it's also the price constraint that's also when we are putting in many many small seeds and uh, and expensive seeds the the price increases so what we what we aim for is that we don't exceed the uh, 50 or 55 euro per hectare seed cost but we try to stay under it so be around 35 to 45 euros per hectare so that's the most important uh, constraint i would say because otherwise uh, the farmer would would uh, would not use these mixes. They would use uh, cheap mixes or just just use one or two species. So, so that's it. For the second question regarding the rye, um, I would say uh, uh, it's uh, of course I, I don't think that the allelopathic uh, effect stops immediately uh, when you when you have the when you when you have the the glyphosate termination. Uh, but we will have further investigation. We will we, uh, we will have to have further investigation regarding if the allelopathic cause maybe the 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 year decrease uh, in the in this experiment. So when the rye was terminated uh, in the in uh, the latest part of the or, or, or the or only four days before the the seeding of the sunflower, could it be the the rye? I would say I would say not really. Because uh, as, as as we can see from with our, uh, during our trips in the United States, that when they are uh, seeding first, for example, planting the corn first in the standing rye, and then using some kind of termination, either a roller crimping or a glyphosate treatment, they they experience no uh, uh, they experience no problems with the allelopathy. So, but uh, but yeah, we will have to have to investigate at what caused uh the year decrease uh on, on in the in the case thank you thank you very much. okay thank you very much um okay maybe there's one minute left actually stoiko you want to add something oh uh, we have also questions to the two uh, austrian speakers but uh i we don't have time maybe just uh it's question but it can be turned on the proposal uh there was a question where to uh, uh, to make a soil test using Albrecht method, maybe it's a good uh, proposal to put on the on the website the addresses or uh, of the laboratories when we can send uh, soil samples to analyze according to Albrecht method. And I think it's it's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Stoiko. Um,
Okay, then I want to welcome Jan from Bio Institute, and um, he will talk about the session, the Czech and Slovakian session. Jan, please come up. Hello again. Hello again. So, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Martin. Uh, yes, we had a very interesting afternoon. It was, let's say, a discussion blast. I think people were very interested. We had a very diverse audience. Uh, there were practitioners, people from the NGOs, scientists, uh, people from the university. So uh, we had the chance to uh, hear opinions from many different point of point of views that I would really uh, highlight. Uh, maybe I would also mention uh, Stoiko, Stoiko's uh, recommendation to share the more more details about the Albrecht method because that's uh, also a topic we discussed during the afternoon and and many people would be interested in uh, knowing knowing more about this uh, about this method. Uh, maybe if we have a space for for a few questions, these can be directed to to the both both Austrian uh, farmers and uh, do we? Yes, I, I would say we, we try like to include them now. I'm not sure if we can uh, really, there's so many questions and they will be uh, uh, answered afterwards, but I would say like definitely that we are gonna answer some of them. So maybe we can, I know Benjamin is translating. So there was one question um, about the Albrecht method actually. And the, the question is from Bulgaria, what I read, but I don't, it's for, I guess so for France, but I'm not sure. Yes, they are both uh, using the Albrecht method. Yes, yes, uh, yes. And and Hubert is he's just posting the link actually. So ah, that's the best answer you can give, right? Okay. <laughs> the Albert trial actually, yes, it is here. Uh, maybe maybe Benjamin can join or uh, somebody who can translate or otherwise, yeah, it's working like this. Yeah. Hello. Oh, perfect. Thank you for joining, course, Benjamin. Here I am, translator. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very spontaneous. I like it. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna translate for Hubert and yeah. Franz. And there were some questions already. The Albert Untersuchung. There was one post, and yeah. maybe there are other questions as well. Yeah. Yes, we we had uh, some questions for. I think both of the farmers are using the compost tea. So maybe if they could tell us more about the compost tea, which compost is the good compost to to make it from. And uh, maybe a second question uh, for, again, both farmers, uh, if they could tell us both uh, more about the CO2 sequestration and uh, the, the method that it is based on. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you, Jan, for your question. Jan, could you please repeat from the first question um, about the compost tea? Mm -hmm. You had the question yes. on, on which it is based, on which plants? Uh, which compost is the most suitable to 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 prepare it from? Okay. Or how to? Mm -hmm. What is the input mat material for the compost tea? Okay. Also, ich ich werde das jetzt auf Deutsch übersetzen und und hoffe, dass mich äh, Franz und Hubert hören und verstehen und währenddessen auch uns beitreten. Ihr könnt eigentlich beide beitreten. Wir haben Raum genug und das könnt ihr, indem ihr rechts oben auf mhm. das Darauf klickt es auf das, auf das Beitreten. Also die erste Frage war, ob ihr etwas zur Albrecht-Methode erzählen könnt und wo man das machen kann. Der Hubert hat da schon was gepostet, sehe ich. Die zweite Frage war, ähm, welcher Kompost gut geeignet ist, um einen Kompost Tee zu machen? Also welcher am besten geeignet ist. Und die dritte Frage war, ob ihr etwas zur CO2-Sequestrierung, also wie man das CO2 im Boden speichern kann, wie man das am besten machen kann. Ja. Jetzt braucht ihr euch. Okay, thank you, Ben. Yes. I, I was... So actually, I'm going to translate for the other audience. Um, Benjamin just translated and asked actually uh, Franz and Hubert uh, three questions, and we are waiting for them to answer. And they're trying to join us. So they're trying to. And maybe we're going to be successful. Or they. <laughs> Mm 
Yeah, Jan. Meanwhile, maybe we're gonna talk about the session. So, Jan, you had a your session went well, I guess. So, some maybe have been already tired because it's a long session, I guess. So, but but by the people motivated. Actually, the other way around, uh, we had different different dynamics. Okay. Yes, uh, the afternoon was full of, full of okay. energy. Yeah, very very fruitful. Hear. Yeah. So I think we all are looking forward to continue tomorrow morning again with very interesting mm -hmm. uh, presentations. Yes, definitely, definitely. And um, the people who are watching now, I really encourage you again to, I don't see so much going on here on the stage, but really uh, come up and you can ask any question. Don't be shy. So nothing can happen and it's anonymous. Somehow, <laughs> but it's a European Union project for sure. We are hundred percent there. So you know, data security is the most important for us after the soils, right? <laughs> okay. So um, now we, I see that we have Plan B. Benjamin is calling. Ah, Franz, welcome. Hello, hello, hello from Austria to Austria. <laughs> Nice to have you here. Okay. So now we ha have our little humus round, right? <laughs> round table <laughs> on humus. <laughs> okay. Um, did you, Franz, did you get the uh, questions? Okay. Hast du die Fragen bekommen? Oh, ja, ja, Benjamin. Okay, ich werde die Fragen nochmal schnell stellen. Und so die erste war, ob du ein bisschen was erzählen könntest über die Albrecht-Methode. Also da der wichtigste Teil der Albrecht-Methode ist der Nährstoffausgleich. Nährstoffe beeinflussen. The most important thing from Albrecht Method is the uh, exchange of nutrients. Nährstoffe beeinflussen sich gegenseitig und gehören ausgeglichen. Es reicht nicht, dass sie nur vorhanden sind. Nutrients are interacting with each other and it's not sufficient uh, to, 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 to just. Uh, Gut, um, kannst du das letzte nochmal sagen? Es reicht nicht, das was, das was ist? Dass sie nur vorhanden sind, ausreichend vorhanden sind. Sie müssen ausgeglichen sein. Okay, it's not necessary that they are there, uh, like the, that the correct, that they're in the correct uh, measurements they're there. They also has to be in the correct uh, relation to each other. Ja, bitte, Franz. Du kannst fortsetzen oder ist oder war das schon die Antwort zu dem? Das, das war der wichtigste Teil, sonst wird es zu lang. Passt, okay. Die nächste Frage okay. war, äh, welcher Kompost ist am besten geeignet für äh, Kompost Tee zu machen? Which, which compost is the best to make compost tea? Robert. Ähm, das Wichtigste beim, beim Ansetzen von Kompost Tee ist, dass man von dem Kompost, den man verwendet, einen einen Kresse-Test macht, also sprich... You uh, make a Kresse-Test with the, with the compost you're using. Zwei Gläser den Kompost hineingeben, eines... Uh, Take two glasses, dann, put the compost inside, red up weiter und ich red drüber. Yeah. Dann die uh, Kresse anbauen Then you put und the press into it. Uh, leicht gießen, dann ein Glas zuschließen und ein Glas offen lassen und beide müssen gleich in die Höhe wachsen. Irrigate it a bit, and you close one glass and the other glass you let it open. And but both in both glasses the crest should grow in the same way. Uh, ein sehr guter Kompost ist auch uh, uh, unter Laubbäumen, sprich Buchenwald. Uh, a very good compost is in, in, in under uh, uh, trees which have foliage, which have leaves, <coughs> like for example. Uh, <laughs> like for example, the uh, um, just give me a second. The beach, European beach, common beach. The oh, Erde quasi unter den unter den uh, oops, uh, unter den Laubbäumen. And the soil under these trees. Yeah. A Erde. And also it must be a very mature soil. Es muss ein, ein reiner, also die Erde darf nicht ähm, irgendwelchen Schadstoffen oder was haben, weil sonst vermehrt man ja Schadbakterien. And the soil should be very clean, it should not have any, it should not be contaminated with anything, because then you would uh, encourage this, this contaminants and you would have it in your, uh, in your tea then, in your end product. 
Okay, jetzt okay. vielleicht noch die letzte Frage zur CO2-Sequestrierung. Maybe, maybe we keep this question and, and I'm gonna, because we have still you did and okay. Rakitza so like coming up. Then. So maybe I would... I, I, also, so I will go out and, and maybe they, uh, they can join and I will come back then when we have another question. I would say like that Benjamin, Franz and Hubert are gonna stay. It makes it easier, I guess so, and, and that uh, I say bye to Jan and I'm gonna invite Judith. Okay, jetzt kommt, kommt Judith aus Ungarn und da zählt uns, wie sie in Ungarn gegangen ist. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Judith from Hungary, Hungary is coming and maybe she gonna have some questions for us because the feedback round, I have the feeling uh, we had so much already, so maybe we go in Mides race and with the questions. Hello. Hi, Judith. It was a great idea. We Thank love it from... because in the Hungarian group, we <laughs> wish to have Franz and Hubert um, uh, in our session too. So we collected a lot of questions. Uh, we were also interested in the Albrecht method, and thank you for the um, the link. And uh, we had a question about uh, um, when uh, do you apply the EM, the effective microorganism uh, product, and um, does soil moisture have any effect on the timing of the application? This is one question. The other one is about um, the drills. What kind of drills do you use? It is commercially available or uh, there is some special invention in it. We have a question on uh, application of lactic acid when and, um, and, and how. And um, our uh, farmers were interested. Pardon, in application of what? What uh, lactic acid. Lactic acid, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, it or the bacteria of lactic uh, bacteria of lactic acid. I think it uh, they mentioned, and uh, they were interested in how do you uh, mulch a potato potato mm. stands. Okay. And the and the last one, I think uh, it's uh, I, it's uh, in, uh, interesting in the uh, use of uh, um, manure uh, fer fermented manure and uh, how do you uh, ferment the manure and uh, the how you do the grass under sowing quite a lot so it would be it would have been nice to have you there so and there is the there is the question of a co2 sequestration as well um that the um, the basic question is i would rec i would suggest even if i don't like to but still i have the feeling that there is much interest about the questions and being answered now so either we can have like one two and go on to Brankica, the last one, uh, last facilitator, or uh, we're gonna add like five to ten minutes if it's fine for all of you. Please, audience, just say like yes into the right on the right side <laughs> on the chat. And uh, if it's for everybody okay, I would say like we maybe have five to ten minutes more, like that we end our session at, at 5 30, 5, 5 40 ish, if this is fine. So uh, I don't see like a basic no, so I would say like we go continue. Okay, so I übersetze jetzt einmal. Ich würde sagen, wir bringen Frage für Frage durch und ich fange mal mit der ersten Frage an. Wann tät ihr EM applizieren? Zu welchem Zeitpunkt? Sollen wir, wir gleich antworten? Ja, ich glaube, wir machen es Frage für Frage. Also, ein short an and answers maybe. Also, kurze Antworten jetzt. Ähm, EM oder Fermente ähm, braucht man dann, wenn man sozusagen eine Verletzung in den Boden macht und die Verletzung mehr oder weniger wieder reparieren soll. Das sprich, sprich, wenn man mit tiefen Locker äh, in die Erden reinfährt, macht man Verletzungen und dort können EM eine gewisse äh, Reparatur wieder machen. Oder eben die zweite Variante ist, bei der Verrottung am oberirdischen Material, wenn man Grünmaterial um und verrotten lässt, dass man einen Fermentationsprozess macht. Okay. Good so the, the EM, they apply when they um, are working with the subsoiling. So when, when the soil is, um, he said the name, vulnerated. When the soil is vulnerable, the EM is applied deep into the soil so that uh, the soil can be healed again or when they have organic matter on the soil and they want to help to degrade it so they also apply it on the organic matter on the soil surface. Und dazu weiter war zur Frage noch, 
ob die Bodenfeuchte einen Effekt hat auf die, äh, auf den, auf die Verwendung von EMs. Also welchen Zusammenhang gibt es von Bodenfeuchte und Verwendung äh, von effektiven Mikroorganismen? Also die Bodenfeuchte da die nicht unbedingt als, als großes ähm, Kriterium sehen. Natürlich ein zu trockener Boden ist nichts und ein zu feuchter Boden auch nicht, weil Boden, also Mik äh, Mikroorganismen brauchen ja eine gewisse Feuchte. Also es soll nicht zu trocken sein, das ist sozusagen von der Feuchte. Ähm, die, das für entscheidender ist sozusagen der pH-Wert. Also das, was man viel mehr im Auge behalten soll. Oder wenn der pH-Wert niedrig ist, macht man ja mit, mit Mikroorganismen im pH-Wert noch niedriger und das kann eventuell zu Problemen führen. Okay, das, da kann ich was sagen. Uh, so, soil moisture in regards to the, when you apply effective microorganisms is not so important. Um, you shouldn't have a too dry soil and also not a too wet soil. More important in this context is the pH value. So when the pH is too low uh, with the effective with the microorganism, it even gets more lower. So maybe more important is, is to consider the pH value and not the wetness of the soil. Uh, Martin, should I, how many time do I have? Can I ask more questions? Um, take, it's okay, yeah, two, three minutes more okay. is fine. Um, and then we go to bank. So. Yes. Ja, äh, da, da ist eine Frage gekommen, wie, wie funktioniert das mit dem Erdapfelmulch? Das gab ein Interesse zum Erdapfelmulch. Es hat noch ein paar Fragen gegeben, aber fangen wir mit dem an. Wir machen die Mulchabdeckung, wenn der Rocken blüht oder nach der Blüte. Das heißt, circa vier Wochen nach dem Pflanzen. Kartoffelpflanzen. Soll ich weiterreden oder? Um, okay, this question now is about potato mulching. Franz is saying how he is doing it. So he says he is applying the mulch four weeks after potato planting. So he says this is um, während der Blüte, beziehungsweise kurz nach der Blüte, sagst du. Uh, frühestens ab der Blüte, es geht ums Zähnverhältnis. Er soll genug Kohlenstoff haben, dass er langsam verrottet. Okay, so they apply it. Uh, the most earliest moment, it's, it's a bit shortly before the flowering of the potato. So from four weeks after potato planting until the starting of the flowering from the potato plant. This is when they apply potato mulch. Egal ob die Kartoffeln schon aus dem Boden schauen, 20 cm hoch sind oder noch gar nicht sichtbar sind, auf das nehmen wir nicht Rücksicht, spielt auch keine It does not matter if the potato is, is, is emerging or if it's 10 cm, 20 cm, we throw the mulch on it. Je feuchter das Material ist, umso länger häckseln wir es, weil es dann schneller verrottet. Trockenes Material wird kürzer gehäckselt mit ca. 3 bis 5 cm, feuchtes Material eher um die 10 cm. The, the, The wetter the material, the, je, je, je feuchter es ist, desto kürzer und je, je trockener. Nein, je trockener umso okay. länger. The drier the material, the longer um, the hexeln. Does anyone have the English word for hexeln? Um, sorry, guys. Hexeln. Chaffing, aha, the chaffing of the material. Do you understand chaffing? So shredding it, shredding. I think shredding is the correct word. Cutting, shredding. Mm. Mm. And the wetter it is, uh, the smaller they have it. Mm -hmm. Wenn wir genügend Material haben, dann streuen wir so viel draus, dass man die Erde nicht mehr sieht. When we have enough material, we put enough on it, so that we don't see the soil anymore. Im Herbst gibt es keine Störungen bei der Ernte, weil dann das Material kaum noch In autumn we have no problem with harvesting, because the organic matter already is decomposed. Nearly totally. He said a little bit is still there, but it's so they have no problem with potato harvest. Ja, ich glaube, das okay. waren die Hauptpunkte. 
Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, then I would say like, thank you. And maybe you still stay here for Prankica. And if there are questions for John there, then we still uh, get him up. So thank you, Judith. The next one is Prankica, please come on the stage. She's from Serbia, from the Institute of Pesticides and Environmental Protection. Yes. Hello, everyone. And so uh, we, yes. we also had discussion in our, in our session. And there were quite uh, uh, a lot of questions. But uh, I will now ask one sh short one. What is Brassica Pro? Sie würden gerne wissen, was ist Brassica Pro? Yeah. Brassica Pro ist eine Mischung äh, von der DSV, eine Spezialmischung, die ist entwickelt worden als äh, Rapsuntersaat, äh, wo hauptsächlich Lupinen, puh, ein paar Kleearten äh, und ich glaube Leindotter Lein. oder Öllein, Öllein drinnen sind. Äh, und äh, aber wie gesagt, es ist hauptsächlich eine, eine Mischung, die für, für Rapsuntersatten entwickelt wurde, aber wir verwenden sie in den Kartoffeln. Okay, so the Brassica Pro is a mixture from DSV, a German seed company, um, which was developed for rapeseed under so on, on the sowing of rape. And the mixture inside are lupins, clovers and also linen oil linen okay thank you very much and also we had uh, quite a lot of questions for for uh, for zombor yes. and yeah. one of the most interesting for me was uh, related to the bacteria in the soil covered with the with their cover crops if they uh, check their antagonistic uh, properties Okay, thank you for the question. And I'm um, gonna ask if Jomba can come up as well. Otherwise, we have to maybe meanwhile, we will check if it works now. Otherwise, I want to ask this uh, question of the audience, Tristan. He, uh, he's asking, when do you do that mulching? Wann macht sie das mit dem Mulch? Zu welchem Zeitpunkt? So verstehe ich das. Ja. Mal. Uh, wir richten uns dabei ausschließlich nach dem Mulchmaterial, nicht nach den Kartoffeln. Das Mulchmaterial ist Wickrocken, also Winterwicke mit Winterrocken, hauptsächlich Rocken. Und der muss reif genug sein, sprich genügend Kohlenstoff haben. Und deswegen frühestens ab der Blüte, eher nach der Blüte. Ende Mai. Es gibt noch eine zweite Faustregel bei den Kartoffeln. So die die äh, Pflanzen sollten so Hand hoch und Hand breit sein. Bis, dort, bis zu diesem Zeitpunkt kann man sie abdecken. Benjamin, can you translate, please? Thank you. Okay, they said uh, upon the, the mulching material to decide when it is ready. They never decide on the on the plant, also so on the on the potato plant. They decide on the when the material is ready. So, for example, the rye or the sorghum, when when the material is ready for mulching, then then they apply it. And Hubert added that uh, by the end of May. Hubert, when hast du gesagt beim Ende Mai und wann es hoch genug ist? Wie kannst du das nochmal sagen? Wann die die Pflanze handbreit und handhoch ist, ist so eine Faustregel. Aha, okay. Bis zu diesem Zeitpunkt kann man es abdecken. Du meinst, du meinst die Kartoffelpflanzen? Die Kartoffelpflanzen, ja. Wir haben es aber auch schon abdeckt, wie es 20 cm oder größer geworden und das ist gut. Okay, there are another shared experiences, which is very great, uh, because this helps to understand and to push the boundaries. So uh, Hubert is saying, uh, cool. when the plant, the potato plant is uh, at more or less this height and and also this uh, width, so breadth and height, so length and height, and also uh, Franz is saying that it also worked when it's higher. So when it, even if it's higher, they put the, the march on the plant when it was 20 centimeters centimeters high. Okay, so so this was this is the the 
the height they, they are using. And yeah, so there are different approaches. Oh. OK, thank you very much, Benjamin, for translating. Thank you for showing up, Franz and Hubert. Thank you for the comments. Hats. And maybe I'm going to ask you, please, to um, Yes, to leave the stage, <laughs> they're perfect. And now maybe a last question to Sombio to round it up, that we have one little question and then we're gonna finish. So I'm here, hi, Branky. So, hi, could you please some, repeat some, the question, Branky, so if I may. Uh, the, yes, the question was about microorganisms in the soil. Yes. So did you check for their antagonistic properties or just counting the, the numbers? It was just uh, the counting. It was a soy food web analysis. So it was only the counting of... Uh, so we, we have seen the the, nema, the kind of... Nema, we were looking for nematodes and we were all but, uh, also for algae, but we, we did no, no, uh, no DNA sequencing or something like that. So we only know the total number of the fungi and the total number of the bacteria, but we, we don't know their their effects or what 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 kind of straw strains or what kind of strains there were. So no, we we have not done that that deep. It was only a, a soy food web analysis done here in Hungary. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think thank you, Sandro. Um, I guess there are more questions, but they all will be answered, and we will get back to that. But now we have to finish because we already more than 10 minutes um, more over time. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. And thank you very much for taking time. Thanks, thanks to all the facilitators, the presenters, the organizers. And thank you to everybody, including me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm kidding around. Um, actually, thank you for all who made this possible. So uh, session number one and two are finished. I'm closing this today. And we're coming back tomorrow right at this place again, you know about the stage, the sessions, everything is clear. You are masters, I guess so, of, of soils and masters of the technique, right? I guess so. So um, I'm happy that everything went on, went well. And, and tomorrow at 8.30, we're gonna start here, the session about compost. It's the third session, the last one. And we're gonna fish, finish around 12.45. Uh, I'm saying around, maybe we can take one or two hours extra time. No, I'm kidding around. But maybe we're going to have like a kind of informal after regular table thing. But I'm not sure about that. And we're going to see how it works and flows. Yeah, so thank you very uh, much. And danke, schönen Abend, Tag und Nacht. And bye-bye. See you tomorrow.